I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at this new Hollybro Kakut. It does have a pre-release version of Betaflight on here. It's Betaflight 3.2 and uh, very interesting. It has a floating IMU on there, what we call a floating IMU. Uh, the accelerometer is actually soft mounted above the flight controller with a cable extending up to it. So it's very neat because it isolates a lot of the vibration problems that the gyros have uh, on some of these F4 boards and uh, personally, I, I'm excited that they've done it this way, uh, and I'm looking forward to flight testing this because I've had some kind of um, tuning issues with F4s. We've had to soft mount them with uh, rubber grommets and dampeners and do all kinds of different things to get these highly sensitive gyros to perform well. So uh, let's go ahead and open up the box and take a look. So here it is out of the box and you can't really tell from this direction, but looking at it from the top, you can't really tell that this is floating, but it indeed is mounted with a piece of foam underneath it. So it's soft mounted on top of the flight controller, which is really nice. You still have that arrow pointing. This is the front direction. You even have one on here for uh, if you have to take this off, they actually give you an extra ribbon cable in the package, which is really nice in case you damage that somehow in a crash, maybe a tree branch or something rips it off. Uh, but if you have to mount it back on there, which is also nice, they include an arrow on there to let you know. Uh, so what, what is an IMU? Some of you guys who are new to drone racing or drones in particular, an IMU is essentially an internal measurement unit that measures outside pressures, angular rate, and specific forces that get exerted on the body of the aircraft uh, or the sensor itself. And it measures these and almost instantaneously reports it back to the flight controller itself so that it can maintain a proper and level orientation uh, according to the motors and the speed controller so it's a very uh a very stable system being able to soft mount your IMU like this. Now I have seen this before. This is not new to multi-rotors. They've done it on some aerial quads. Some quads that are used for filming have had soft mounted IMUs just like this uh, on other models such as like DJI and some of the other brands out there. Uh, but for FPV racing, this is kind of a new direction for, for F4s, which is great because most of you guys know, if you watch my channel, you know that I've said that F4s are particularly sensitive and they need quite a bit of dampening. I've used some F4s with a lot of rubber grommets underneath the standoffs to try to isolate some of that vibration coming from that super sensitive uh, sensor in the very middle for the F4. Now they do give you an extra ribbon cable in the package, which is great because you might need that if you crash and you have to reattach this ribbon cable somehow to it. Uh, and it looks like it probably solders down to the board underneath this piece of foam right here. You can see it flat on the board. And then we'll have some super tiny solders right here to go back on there. But I'm not 100% sure. It looks like there's a piece of tape over top of it, just holding it down a little bit extra. It doesn't look like a snap-in ribbon cable. Um, these look like they have to be soldered on. If I break one, I will let you know. So not only do you have a nice soft mounted IMU floating processor right here, we also have a huge voltage range on this flight controller. We have from seven to 42 volts, up to 6S battery on this flight controller. So if you have ESCs that can support up to 6S, you can run this like a monster if you want. Uh, Cause you know, 120 continuous current, 120 amps is huge. So tons of power available on this flight controller. Now, like I was saying before, it does have this new pre-release version of beta flight on here, 3.2. Uh, it's not due out till the fall. So if you want to, you can also flash it with clean flight. It also works with clean flight for guys that like clean flight. And it also does BL heli pass through, which is nice because if you have to upgrade your ESCs and configure them using pass through, you can also do that because it supports that as well. Now you're looking at it front to back here and a lot of the reason that people choose these all-in-one flight controllers is to really is to simplify the build. Now it looks kind of complicated guys but it's really not that complicated. Uh, so what you're going to do is when you first set this up you're going to solder on your battery terminal wires here out to your XT60 uh, and you also have a pretty standard ESC layout. You have your motor one here we have positive and negative and then we have motor two, motor three, and motor four. You can see simply there G for ground and 
B plus for positive. Uh, so that's the way it's going to be labeled for your positive and ground wire for your ESCs. And then you have just above that, that little dot right there, that's going to be for your signal wire. Now it doesn't have any extra wire there for that ground, that notorious ground wire like some people like to uh, solder up. Uh, but usually I just take the ground wire off and I just put the signal wire here. Now don't confuse that with the main ground wire right here. Uh, this is specifically speaking about the signal wire. Now what I think is also pretty cool about this is the fact that it does uh, have OSD incorporated to it. All my 2017 quads absolutely required to have OSD. I just I won't fly without OSD anymore. I want to have all that telemetry and data. Now it does have uh, 120 megabits of uh, on storage data. It doesn't have the uh, little micro SD card under here. They just didn't have enough room to include that but that's okay. We can deal with that. Also it supports PID tuning from the FR Sky transmitter, which is great. Uh, so you can change your PID settings inside your goggles using this flight controller. That's really, really nice. It also does have a smart port right here. Some of you guys might want to know about that uh, for your extra telemetry. So did you guys find the boot button yet? And some of you guys that are new, I always like to educate you guys. Uh, the boot button is what you're gonna to use to reflash it. If you can't connect to it via the USB port right here, you're going to usually find the boot button next to the USB port, it's right there. And it's one of those super tiny ones. Um, you can kind of press it with your fingernail uh, or maybe a toothpick, hold it down and you can reflash this board with Betaflight or CleanFlight. Now let's go ahead and talk about what receivers, what type of receivers it does support. Now a lot of you guys are using SBUS and that's pretty much the standard out there right in the FPV community right now and uh, that's a digital type of receiver versus the PPM receiver is actually going to be analog. Um, so most of us are moving over to SBUS and this doesn't support PPM. So if you have a PPM receiver and you're trying to hook it up and you don't know why it won't work, it's because it does not work with a Kakut F4 AIO. It just simply doesn't support it. So the only ones that it does support is S bus receivers. It does support I bus, and it also supports you spectrum guys uh, for your satellite receivers. So you do have a 3.3 volt uh, pad on here as well, which is pretty nice. You also have five volt on here. Now, where does it go? It goes right down here at the very bottom of this stack right here. You see ground right here. We see three volt right here. We see five volt right here. We see R3 right here. And the R3 is where your signal wire is going to solder down to. It also does not support PWM, which is the uh, per servo wire coming into a uh, flight controller. You know, it just has a lot more wires. And these days we're trying to clean things up by using less wires. So S bus is only three wires and just a lot more convenient. Also a lot better signal protocol. Now we'll talk about where the video transmitter goes. If I move this little ribbon cable back just a little bit, and you want to be careful when you're soldering this up because you could damage this ribbon cable. So make sure you secure that ribbon cable back somehow. Um, and if you look at that, right on the very top left over here is V1. That's where you're going to solder up your signal wire coming from your video transmitter uh, on that pad. Directly next to it, you have ground, 5 volt, and positive there, B+. Now what I like about these all-in-one flight controllers is the fact that we don't have to splice the uh, video wire over from the VTX like we used to have to do. We can just go straight into these boards, which is nice because you'll have all of your VTX wires here. Uh, VTX is video transmitter, by the way. And then up here, these four right over here, those are going to be for your camera. If you want to solder up your camera, you're going to go directly to this board. Super easy. So you're going to solder the video wire from the camera to the VO pad. Uh, and it's going to be the second one down from the right, right here. You also have your ground next to that. And you have B plus right there and five volt right there. And there's one other pad that I didn't talk about yet on here. And uh, for those of you who are using immersion RC telemetry, uh, such as the IRC Tramp telemetry protocol, you can solder that up to the T6 tab right here. That's where you're going to solder up your audio wire from the VTX to the TX6 pad right there. And for those guys that have RSSI support on your receiver, you can solder that wire directly to the RSSI tab right here. Uh, and that's directly below the TX6 pad right there. And now that you've seen all of that, now where does the buzzer go? The buzzer goes down here. Uh, it's going to be just below the area where motor two is. So you have positive right here on the very top facing the front and negative right below there. 
Now, one little bit of feedback uh, about this board uh, to Hollybro and to um, some advice to guys that are new to building. These pads over here on this left-hand side are actually really close together, so you want to use a nice fine tip soldering pin when you're going to uh, put solder down and put your wires down. And you want to use some type of magnification to look and see that you're not bridging solder over from one tab to the other. Just take a close look at these tabs before you plug in your battery. Uh, any of these bridged solder tabs from one to the other would cause a short and pretty much fry your whole board so you want to be careful of that uh, before you plug in your battery it's always best to just use a multimeter on here and just check for continuity in between uh, pad to pad so that you don't have any bridging of solder going on and like I've said before on this channel in flight controller tutorials, make sure that you don't reverse any of your positive and negative wires, your red and black wires, because that will also cause an immediate short out and you're gonna fry this flight controller. Uh, so just go back and carefully check over all of your solder points where your wires are going to, to double check, triple check that nothing is in reverse. Now you're looking at the bottom of the board and there's not a lot of things you have to worry about on here for uh, regular pilots. Don't be too concerned with anything under here. Under here is basically uh, another ground port here. You also have a CAN bus, low and high ports right here, and you have a debugging interface for developers. So unless you're a developer, don't worry about most of the stuff on the bottom of the board here. So that's about it for this review, you guys, and overview of the Hollybro Kakut. Um, can't really call it a review because I didn't actually test it, but uh, from what I see in the specs in the manual, and everything looks pretty well laid out on here. I also like the fact that it does have that floating IMU processor on there, so that's going to be nice for dampening this F4. Uh, I'd probably give it a little smoother performance, so I think they're kind of on the right track here with this idea. Now I'm going to mount this one onto my new Gap RC Leopard frame. This is super cool. It has an aluminum body that comes over the top. A really nice, slick looking uh, new frame. It also has some sort of colored carbon fiber pieces that are gonna go on the side to mount the camera. Now, I'm also using that in conjunction with the new Tattoo 30 Amp BL Heli S D-Shot ESCs. Those just came out. If you're familiar with Tattoo batteries, they're awesome. So I'm expecting the same out of these ESCs and uh, I've had these here on the bench for a little while and Tattoo is waiting for that review for you guys and uh, that's coming up on the channel so stay tuned on drone camps you're going to see some pretty cool stuff coming up in the next couple weeks so please do subscribe i'm justin davis i'll see you on the next one